Hey, what do you say we light a giant match on Jupiter, the largest room of explosive gas in our solar system? Jupiter has methane, a gas that's famous for its bright burning. Plus, there's metallic hydrogen, which, under the planet's extreme pressures, turns into a potent fuel. However, when we try to start a fire, nothing happens. There are no expected explosions. Now why is that? And can we fix that if we really, really want to blow up Jupiter? Jupiter is the titan of our solar system, the biggest planet we have nearby. It's 11 times wider than us. If Earth was a nickel, Jupiter would be a basketball. It's hanging out as the fifth one from the Sun, right after Mars. It's also more than 300 times heavier than our Earth, and twice as heavy as all the other planets combined. Because of this enormous mass, it acts as a moon magnet. Jupiter has 95 known moons. The most famous of them are the Galilean satellites – Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. They were discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1610. Jupiter also has some rings. Now, they're not as fancy as Saturn's, though. Just faint rings made of dust, not ice. Because of that, they don't reflect light as brightly, and we can't see them with a naked eye. Jupiter also has the shortest day in our solar system – only about 10 hours. But it takes the planet about 12 Earth years to go around the Sun one time. But the most important thing about the planet is that, unlike Earth, it's not solid. Jupiter, as well as Saturn, are the so-called gas giants – planets made mostly of gases. Gas giants are mainly composed of hydrogen and helium – the same stuff that makes up stars. Jupiter and Saturn also have a dash of other heavier elements. This doesn't mean that the entire planet is just a ball of gas. The pressures inside are so harsh that molecules can't stay in that form. Their outer layers are made of compressed molecular hydrogen. As we dive deeper, it turns into a layer of liquid metallic hydrogen. Finally, there's a potential rocky core deep down. From the outside perspective, it looks like layers of clouds in their atmospheres. Jupiter also has these stripes and swirls that look like patterns. Now, in reality, they're chilly clouds made of ammonia and water, floating in a mix of hydrogen and helium. Its famous Great Red Spot is actually a massive storm that's been raging for hundreds of years. This storm itself is bigger than our whole Earth, and it's twice as fast as the Earth's fastest possible storms. So this is the problem we encounter when we try to light a fire on Jupiter. If you somehow manage to stand on Jupiter without any solid surface, while not caring about the titanic gravity and the crazy storms, fire needs oxygen to burn. And Jupiter's atmosphere doesn't have any. No oxygen, no flames. Well, let's assume that we have a magic match that can generate its own oxygen. That should work, right? Well, unfortunately, Jupiter is so massive that you would need an insane amount of oxygen to do that perhaps way more than the entire solar system has. You might have heard that Jupiter protects us from dangerous asteroids. It's so gravitationally strong that it attracts all the objects that could have hit Earth otherwise. In general, Jupiter experiences from 30 to 100 collisions per year. Well, these meteorites falling on Jupiter didn't cause explosions either. Even the most powerful crash on Jupiter didn't. It happened with a comet called Shoemaker-Levy 9 in 1994. The comet broke into pieces in 92, some as big as half a mile. And then, in 94, it got a little too close to Jupiter. The impact was incredibly dramatic. Over six days, 21 fragments hurtled into Jupiter's atmosphere at great speeds. The planet's atmosphere heated up to 53,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Like a ripple effect from a tossed rock into a pond. The impacts created colossal plumes. They reached up to 1,900 miles above Jupiter's clouds. Dark clouds of impact debris scarred Jupiter's atmosphere for months, gradually fading away in the planet's winds. Now, This impact told us a lot of interesting things about Jupiter. For example, the dark impact clouds acted as wind tracers and revealed high-altitude winds in Jupiter's stratosphere. Changes in Jupiter's aurora helped us learn more about the planet's magnetosphere. And finally, it provided insights into Jupiter's chemistry. Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 sparked NASA's interest in addressing the risks of impacts like that on Earth. This, in turn, helped us to learn more about comets and impacts in general. 
Saturn, the sixth planet from the Sun and the second largest in our solar system, is also a gas giant. Like Jupiter, it's not just a plain ball of gas. Even though it's mostly made of hydrogen and helium, at Saturn's center, there's a dense core of metals like iron and nickel surrounded by rock. What's interesting is that it's much lighter than Jupiter. It's only 95 times heavier than Earth. Saturn has stripes in yellow, white, reddish, orange, pink, and green. Who came up with that color palette? Winds in the upper atmosphere can reach a staggering 1,090 miles per hour, even faster than on Jupiter and unimaginable compared to Earth. They look like colorful belts covering the planet, finishing with fascinating rings. Now These rings are made up of bits and bobs from comets, asteroids, and shattered moons. There's even a Cassini division, a gap that separates some of these ring layers. Now, what about Uranus and Neptune? They're also giants, and for a while, scientists believe that they belong to the same family as Jupiter and Saturn. However, after a while, we discover that they belong to a different category, ice giants. Again, they're not some giant ice cubes floating in space. Instead, they're mostly made up of heavier substances like water, ammonia, and methane, which could freeze into icy layers in their atmospheres. This is what sets Uranus and Neptune apart from gas giants, despite sharing some similar traits, like awful storms. Our solar system isn't the only one that has planets like that. There are also extrasolar gas giants, categorized by their atmospheric properties from ammonia clouds to entirely cloudless. For example, there are hot Jupiters, a separate category for, well, very hot Jupiter-like planets. They're gas giants that settle too close to their stars. For example, Kelt 9b and Kepler 7b are so close to their suns that one year on them lasts just 18 hours. Recently, we also discovered a little hot Jupiter. This planet, called HIP 675-22b, hmm, is only a few million years old. Sounds like a lot, but it's nothing on a cosmic scale. Our own moon is about 4.5 billion years old. Now, this discovery challenges the norm. Most hot Jupiters out there are away over a billion years old. We're still not sure how this one formed so quickly. What's even more interesting is how these hot Jupiters end up so close to their stars in the first place. Theories abound. Some say they formed right there, despite scorching conditions. Others believe they ventured in from outer space. For example, icy materials made together in a drifting rogue planet. And when it passed around the star, it got attracted by gravity and stayed in orbit. Maybe it happened early on, when the star was wrapped in a gas and dust cocoon. Or later. Scientists will need more research to say for sure. There are also weird oddballs. No, not me. Gas dwarfs. They're also called mini-Neptunes. They're smaller versions of gas giants that have rocky cores swaddled in thick hydrogen and helium blankets. They're called after Neptunes because, after being a bit smaller than this planet, they share a lot of similar traits. Their size ranges from about 2 to 4 Earths. Usually, it's a world with a hefty atmosphere, mainly filled with hydrogen and helium, and perhaps layers of ice, rock, and even liquid oceans beneath the surface. If a planet like that didn't have much gas in its wardrobe, we'd call it an ocean planet instead. We're not sure why they exist, and they defy some scientific norms. Like hot Jupiters, these planets require more exploration. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.